So, so far we have covered few chapters where we only talked about one or single population. So, for example, if you have a variable such as miles per gallon and if we have data which is modeled using normal distribution. So, in this one population case, we may be interested in finding what is the 90% or 95% confidence interval or we may be interested in finding whether or not if a company says like 40 miles per gallon on an average for a car so whether we are able to achieve that or not using hypothesis testing in this case we are dealing with a variable which is a single variable and only one population but sometimes we may be comparing two different populations so we may have a distribution of miles per gallon for one car or one type of car so we still have one variable here but we may be comparing two populations so maybe this one is for car 1 and this distribution is for car 2 and we want to see whether differences are statistically significant or not so this is a two population case so in this chapter we we'll look at situations where you will come across two populations so let me first write down formulae for those three different situations that we have been discussing in earlier chapters so first one is inference about mean and sigma 1 and sigma 2 are known so population standard deviations are known so sigma 1 is obviously population standard deviation for the first population and sigma 2 is population standard deviation for the second population confidence interval we can write like this so you'll, you will notice that basically the formula is extension of what we had done earlier with one population so this is x bar 1 x bar 2 and then you have the plus minus term and z alpha by 2 so basically when sigma is known we use normal distribution and then you have sigma 1 square divided by n1 plus sigma 2 square divided by n2 so test statistic so remember I gave five steps five general steps for doing test of hypothesis so in step number three generally we use a test statistic so when sigmas are known we use z and in this case we are using x1 bar minus x2 bar divided by sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 now the second situation we discussed earlier in earlier chapters is sigma 1 and sigma 2 are unknown or sigmas are not known so the formula for confidence interval now will use t distribution for calculating t alpha by 2 we use t distribution excel function t i n v the first number you should put is alpha and second number degrees of freedom df now how to calculate degrees of freedom for two population it is a slightly involved calculation so I'm going to write down that formula here so this formula is s1 square by n1 plus s2 square by n2 whole square divided by 1 by n1 minus 1 s1 square by n1 whole square plus n2 minus 1 s2 square by n2 whole square similarly for the test statistic so we use t test statistic so this is x1 bar minus x2 bar s1 square by n1 plus s2 square by n2 and this whole thing is within square roots now when we are doing test of 
hypothesis and when you calculate t value in the third step in the fourth step you have to calculate p value and to calculate p value you can use t distribution t d i s t and then the t value that you calculate here and degrees of freedom and you can put 2 if it is a two tailed test so i'm going to draw a line here just to make sure that these are separate third situation as we had done earlier is proportions so for proportions i'm only going to write confidence interval formula and as we had done earlier we use normal distribution for proportions too so we are calculating 90 percent confidence interval for the mean difference between the two populations so we can use the formula that i gave earlier the first formula so in this equation everything except z alpha by 2 is known to calculate z alpha by 2 you are using this normal distribution standard normal distribution z and what we do is so if this this is let's say 90 percent so these will be 5 percent each and this point here is z alpha by 2 so to get z alpha by 2 what we do is so this is all the area to the left of that point so we add 0.9 and 0 0.05 and this should give you i will put all those values now so 13 minus 11 is 2 then you have plus minus so if you simplify this you should get 0 0.98 so basically your confidence interval is 1.02 up to 2.98 so this is the 90 percent confidence interval for the mean difference between the two populations population 1 and 2 If you develop 95% confidence interval for the difference in mean, we can make use of, because this is sigma 1, sigma 2, not known case, we can make use of second formula. So in this equation, the only thing we don't know is T alpha by 2. So let's do that calculation. Now if you look at the formula that I gave you earlier, here it is. So for degrees of freedom, you will notice that S1 square by N1, S2 square by N2 is used two times each. So if we do that calculation, we can use that and come out with degrees of freedom quickly. 1 square by N1, so 9 divided by N1 is 50. So 9 by 50 means uh, 18 by 100 means 0.18. Similarly, S2 square by N2, so you have 10 divided by 55, if you do the calculation, you should get 1.82, so this is 8. So, degrees of freedom, DF, using that formula, S1 square by N1, you got already 0.18 plus 0.182 whole square. And then you have 0.18 square divided by n1 minus 1. So 50 minus 1 is 49. Similarly, 0.182 square divided by 55 minus 1 is 54. So this should give you 0 0.131 for the numerator and a smaller value 0 0.001275 for the denominator this comes to 102.8 now since uh, degrees of freedom cannot be in decimals we have to round this to the lower value 102 we always uh, round lower for degrees of freedom now it may happen that sometimes if you do the calculation your initial value may be in decimals like 0 0.93 now if you get 0 0.93 if you round down you get zero but degrees of freedom cannot be zero so 
only in those cases where your value is less than 1 you should round up so 0.93 for example becomes 1 degree of freedom because we cannot have 0 degrees of freedom so I will write here as a note so it cannot be less than 1 even if you get less than 1 you can round it to 1 t alpha by 2 so this equals t i n v the first number is 0 0.05 why 0 0.05 because 1 minus alpha is 0 0.95 or 95 percent so alpha is 5 percent so 0 0.05 and degrees of freedom we got 102 so if you put this in excel what you get is going to be 1.984 so this 1.984 is the value i'm going to use here for t alpha by 2. now what you will notice is if you look at this problem again what we are trying to compare is whether miles per gallon by two vehicles like first vehicle gives you 32 miles per gallon second vehicle gives you 35 miles per gallon so whether 32 and 35 most of the times the numbers will be different but is this dif difference really statistically significant or not that's what we are checking or we are getting this difference because of just random variations uh, who knows like if you take another sample maybe x1 bar is more than x2 bar so we cannot simply go by the face value like this is 32 and 35 we cannot conclude just by looking at those two that the second vehicle is giving higher mile, miles per gallon when we put all these values not only like uh, x1 bar x2 bar but the sample size the variability and we make use of t distribution and do all the calculation and we get confidence interval so that is more solid and we have more confidence in that calculation rather than only looking at 32 and 35 and jumping to a conclusion that 35 is greater than 32 now if you look at uh, negative 4.2 here so first number is negative second number is also negative and why we are getting negative value is very simple because this is negative here or 32 minus 35 gives you negative value both numbers negative means first car gives lower mileage than the second car if both numbers were positive that means the second car is giving miles per gallon which is statistically significantly higher than the first car so 35 is higher than 32 even if we take repeated samples we will conclude like 95% uh, of the time that the second vehicle is giving higher mileage but if you get one positive and one negative in this confidence interval that means there is no difference even if the two numbers look like uh, different like one is higher and other is lower but if one number was positive and other was negative then we would have concluded that there is no difference between the two cars in terms of miles per gallon let me write down a conclusion here now you get the same outcome even if you do test of hypothesis if you follow the five steps your conclusion is going to be exactly same in this case that the two miles per gallon performances are not same